So semi-glutide is the compound that's, that's made, and it is a GLP-1 agonist drug. That means glucagon-like peptide 1 agonist. So it mimics this same peptide that our body produces, and it's part of this classification called incretin mimetics. And so this is produced, glucagon-like peptide 1, produced by our pancreas, and it tells the brain that we're satiated. And there's a, a bunch of different incretin hormones that are produced inside of our intestinal system and our pancreas that signal up to the hypothalamus, the paraventricular nucleus in the hypothalamus to tell you that you are satiated to no longer desire food and had, have cravings. And then when we're satiated, it helps stimulate fat burning in the body. And so a couple popular brand names, Ozempic, which is FDA approved for type two diabetes. And the typical dosages of Ozempic are one to two milligrams a week. And that's an injection that they inject into your stomach once a week, somewhere between one to two milligrams. Wagovi is used for weight loss, right? So again, Ozempic for, is FDA approved for type two diabetes. Wagovi is the form of semiglutide or GLP-1 agonist that's used for weight loss. And that dosage is gonna be anywhere between 0.25 up to 2.4 milligrams per week. And usually they're giving a higher dose uh, you know, of Wagovi than somebody would take for the, the benefits of Ozempic. And so again, that's an injection into the stomach. And then one other form is Ribelsis, which is a tablet form. You take three to 14 milligrams. The reason why you have such a higher dosage when you're taking it in a tab tablet form is because the gastrointestinal system will break it down so you don't absorb quite as much as when you're doing the injection. So let's go into this. GLP-1 drugs, what do they do? They actually help trigger the pancreas to produce more insulin. And what does insulin do? It takes sugar out of the bloodstream, puts it into the cells. So for somebody with type 2 diabetes, they're not able to get, they have insulin resistance, they're not able to get sugar out of the bloodstream effectively and into the cells. So more insulin, the better they're able to, to clear the bloodstream or get the, the blood sugar down. And that's important from the perspective that very high blood sugar, hyperglycemia, when blood sugar is really high, the sugar molecule binds to proteins in the blood, things like albumin, this protein in the blood, and it creates basically what we call a glycosylated protein. Um, and this is a part of a process called glycosylation. And this creates advanced glycated end products, these AGEs. And AGEs are like shrapnel going through our bloodstream. They drive up inflammation. They damage all the blood vessels in the body. And I mean, you think about somebody with, with uncontrolled diabetes, they end up oftentimes losing their vision. They end up with optic neuritis. They end up with kidney failure, heart failure. They end up with peripheral neuropathy where sometimes they can't feel their feet, their hands. So they end up with all these different problems because of these AGEs circulating and causing massive inflammation throughout their circulatory system. And so it's a really big issue. And so this is why insulin will lower that blood sugar. In fact, clinical research has shown that type 2 diabetics who are taking Ozempic can lower their hemoglobin A1C or the amount of glycation taking place in their body by 1%, which is actually pretty significant. And it also increases the beta cell volume and size, beta cells are in your pancreas. That's what actually produces insulin. So your body gets better off, better at producing insulin, which for a type 2 diabetic is important because these people have had high blood sugar for so long and insulin resistance for so long that the beta cells oftentimes undergo a lot of structural damage. Oftentimes there's an autoimmune component that damages the beta cells as well, and they underproduce insulin. And so that becomes an issue. So this helps increase beta cell production, lowers blood sugar by increasing insulin, and then also it increases satiety. And this is really a key, particularly when it comes to weight loss with these GLP-1 agonists. So it circulates in, gets into the hypothalamus and tells you, okay, I'm fed, I'm satiated, I don't need to eat anymore. I don't need to have cravings. And so it reduces cravings and the overall appetite. And this is where a lot of people are getting weight loss benefits. They notice that they just don't feel like they need to eat as much. They're more satiated with smaller meals. And this is actually what the research says. New England Journal of Medicine, March 2021, they looked at over 2,000 or just under 2,000 obese individuals. 
And they had one group that was doing healthy lifestyle changes, and they were also taking the Wegovy medication, okay? And then they were taking the injection, and then the other group was just doing the same lifestyle changes without the Wegovy uh, injection. They measured them over 68 weeks. What they found was that the group that was doing lifestyle changes along with taking the semi-glutide, the Wagovi, after 68 weeks saw an, an average of 15% loss in their overall body weight, which for somebody that's obese, that's very, very significant. The group that was just doing healthy lifestyle changes saw roughly about a 2.5% loss in overall body weight. And so it showed that they had significant results. And again, what can what sort of physiological mechanism can we break that down to? We know that increasing insulin in general actually causes you to store more body fat. So that's why on this channel, I'm constantly talking about things that we can do to help bring down insulin so you can burn more fat. So it's not the actual increase in insulin that's causing the weight loss. It's the, it's the increased satiety that's taking place. So people are more satiated. They don't have the cravings. They don't, they don't have as much of an appetite, so they're eating less. And overall, that will cause an overall reduction over time in insulin, which will cause more fat burning effects. So clinical research shows that this can be an effective medication for individuals that are looking to lose weight like this. But what are the side effects? Obviously, there's a cost. You got you to pay for the medication, um, which can cost anywhere between $150 to, to $1,000 a month, depending on your insurance and depending on what form you're getting. Side effects are affecting one out of five individuals. Now, the most common side effects are gonna be digestive distress, constipation, diarrhea, acid reflux, indigestion, fatigue, dizziness. So because this is lowering blood sugar, obviously fatigue, dizziness can be resulting in, you know, can, can come from hypoglycemia or too low of blood sugar. And so for some individuals, they notice that. Other individuals notice a lot of GI distress. Again, one out of five are noticing side effects like this. Now, other more rare side effects, but more dangerous side effects include gallbladder attacks, higher risk of thyroid cancer, as well as acute kidney failure, and also pancreatitis, because obviously this is affecting the pancreas. And so there's some pretty risky side effects, things that I would not you know, I, I would obviously be concerned about for anybody taking these medications. And again, one out of five are noticing side effects, pretty significant. Again, most of those side effects are, you know, I guess you could say not life-threatening, they're more mild, but some people may notice some of these more life-threatening side effects if they're taking this for, you know, any length of time. So if the side effects are serious like that, what else can we do to get these great benefits? How can we improve our satiety level without taking the medication. Well, good news, guys. The Obesity Journal 2013 showed something that I teach all the time, that a high protein diet increases postprandial, that means post-meal, GLP-1 levels, as well as PYY, or this is called peptide YY levels, another in cretin hormone that's released. Um, and both of those hormones, PYY as well as GLP-1, interact with our hypothalamus to give us satiation. And so when you consume a higher amount of protein in your meal, you're gonna have less cravings, you're gonna have more satiety, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna feel more full and more satiated with less overall calorie consumption. This is key. So really two big things, taking away ultra processed foods. Ultra processed foods, they're designed in such a way that they increase your cravings, increase your appetite, increase the amount of calories that you're gonna consume in a given meal, and you never really feel fully satisfied. In fact, they'll stimulate more cravings even a few hours after the meal. So taking away the ultra processed foods and increasing the amount of protein that you're consuming, I always recommend roughly 30 to 50 plus grams of protein in each meal. So it really depends on how many meals you consume and your overall body size, but you should be looking for a minimum of 30 and maybe 50, 60, or 70 grams of protein in each meal. And if you do that, you're gonna have a lot better satiety. You can also add in good fiber, so plant-based fiber. 
So just eating fruits, vegetables, things like that, that's gonna naturally improve your satiety level as well. And I also always recommend healthy fats. So getting roughly 15 to 20 or maybe 30 grams of healthy fat in a meal, coming from things like extra virgin olive oil, grass-fed butter, avocados, coconut oil, coconut butter, eggs, things like that, that's where you're gonna get those healthy fats. And if you set your meal up like that, really prioritize getting the right amount of protein, adding in some colorful vegetables, and then also making sure you've got some good healthy fat in there, you're gonna notice that you're more satiated, you're consuming less calories when you are consuming meals. You're also keeping insulin down, which is actually what you really wanna do for long-term sustainable results at reducing inflammation and uh, teaching your body to become a good fat burner. It's actually keeping insulin down, keeping your blood sugar stable. That's what a healthy lifestyle approach using healthy protein does.